Hello YouTubers, this is Sauron and we're checking in today with another IT video. Uh, today's video is going to be about virtual machine, uh, virtual box, virtual machine cloning. Now what is cloning? Uh, cloning is taking an existing uh, virtual machine that you made something like what you have here on the desktop and cloning it so you don't have to pr uh, reinstall the operating system uh, or any applications you might already have on that virtual machine you already had uh, saves you quite a bit of time if you already have like a base machine and all you have to do is add a single application it makes things a lot easier for when you already have everything set up everything uh, secured and hardened for that system so all you have to do is just install your app okay now regarding uh, what types of cloning you can do in VirtualBox so you can do only two types of uh, cloning now you can do a full virtual machine clone and a linked clone. Now with a full virtual machine clone you make an entire copy of this existing virtual machine and it's completely separate from it. Uh, now why would you do and uh, what the thing you do with the uh, linked clone is a little bit more advanced technique. I'll, we'll get into that in a second. Now for the full virtual clone it is independent from the uh, the other client you just had up here that you made a clone of rather. Uh, it's easy to move from one uh, virtual machine host, in this case like my machine here, to another machine. Now, in regards to a linked clone, uh, that one's a little bit more complicated, but it does have quite a bit of advantages. Uh, what a linked clone is, is basically it clones ev almost everything that's on this uh, virtual machine, uh, with the exception in that with a linked clone, it creates like a separate hard drive uh, that records any changes between the linked clone and the uh, original machine so you actually save quite a bit of hard drive space so let's say if this virtual server that I have on my desktop uses 10 gigs if uh, for hard drive space or you know I sign that uh, 10 gigs for hard drive space if you made a full virtual clone uh, or full clone of that server you will be using another 10 gigs now what you would do if you used a linked clone is that you would have the 10 gigs that you assigned to the original base machine already set and any changes that are done on the linked machine are actually saved into a separate file uh, something like let's say if you made a configuration file change or something only a couple kilobytes are saved uh, onto that virtual hard drive so it actually saves you quite a bit of hard drive space and so instead of wasting let's say 20 gigs of hard drive space you use 10 gigs and some odd amount of megabytes or however many uh, however much space that you use for the second for the second machine now let's get started and uh, I can show you go ahead uh, go ahead and show you what to do for both cases now I do have a server base here for the first one you can see uh, we're gonna start out with right clicking and going over to clone uh, you can go ahead and give your new, uh, let's say, we're just going to call this clone PC or clone VM. Just to differentiate it from the base. We're going to go ahead and reinitialize the MAC address so give it a, a different MAC address so it's not confused with the original uh, virtual machine to begin with. You always want to do that. Uh, we're going to go do a full clone. It gives you a short description here. Now, th doing the full clone takes uh, quite a bit of time compared to a linked clone. The reason for that being is that it has to copy, let's say if you assigned a, a 100 gigs to a clone, well, it's got to copy that whole 100 gigs from that first clone to a second one. While the first one, well, it, in the case of a linked clone, you're going to see the, the difference in speed here in a second. As you can see here, where's the, uh, uh, let me get back to that under a linked clone if you create that uh, it only makes a linked clone to the original hard drive and like I said it makes a separate uh, file as it were to save changes to so it's it, making a linked clone is much faster and as you saw it took roughly about maybe 30 seconds to create a linked clone uh, I think this is because this is a th yeah it's about 3 gig har uh, hard drive assigned to it but as you can see here we have two different uh, PCs and this one is completely independent from the uh, original uh, in which case if you wanted to verify that you can go ahead and go into network and you can take a look at the Mac IDs of course we reinitialized re it when we made our uh, the full clone and you can see here it ends in B290 for the 
I'm sorry, for the full clone. And then we're going to go and look at the settings for the base that we did earlier. And as you can see, that's a different MAC address. So it's the same exact operating system, same exact all the stuff that you just did with the original. Uh, the only thing you have to do is, is a couple of things when you have this full clone. Uh, all uh, first thing you would probably want to do is change the NetBIOS name or the you know machine name. In this case, it's the same name as the Clone Master uh, as this one. This one's the same name as my original, which is Clone Master. Uh, like I said, I've already got this completely updated. I've got this completely uh, secured and all that. So all I have to do is make a clone and then do whatever I need to do with this uh, new clone. Let's say if I'm making an NTP server, it would just install the server on this one and it would be completely separate from that. It wouldn't have anything to do with it. I'm going to go and just power down this machine. Go ahead and get rid of that because we no longer need it. Now I'm going to show you how to do a linked clone. A linked clone also has an additional um, advantage in that. Uh, any linked clones that you create will be obviously linked to the base machine, as you'll see here in a second. Uh, first of all, you're going to do clone, reinitialize the Mac again. I'm going to call it linked clone. And we're going to select link clone this time. As you see, that went really fast. And it uses the same exact uh, 3 gig hard drive just like this one did but it's actually using this thing's hard drive to boot off of and any changes are actually going to be saved in a separate uh, storage device for this uh, another a good thing about this is let's say if you have five linked clones all going off of this base you can shut down all of the all five of your linked clones power on your linked base do updates on your base and then turn on your linked clones and you know shut the base off again of course because you can't have the base running while you're running the linked clones uh, shut this off and then turn your link clones back on and voila you just updated five machines simultaneously so it's actually a pretty good uh, pretty good and handy thing to have uh, it boots up just the same just as a full linked clone but from the virtual machine standpoint it can't tell it just has one single hard drive just like it had before uh, the only difference is is that uh, Let's say if I create a file here, it's not going to be saved here. It's going to be saved here. But even though it's using this thing's hard drive, which is kind of a cool thing. So we're going to go ahead and power off this one because we no longer need it. And of course, delete it again. Okay, and deleting all files does not affect the uh, base, base server. As you can see, there's it changes the description somewhat here that uh, adds in a description that you're a linked base. Uh, since we deleted that, it just kind of hangs around. Now another thing I'm going to show you here, while I kind of have you here, is that uh, VirtualBox has added support for groups. So what you can do here is go and select several virtual machines and you can right click on them and just group them. And you can name the group anything you want. Let's say Linux machines. I'm still kind of playing around with the groups thing, but one thing I've noticed because I tend to run a lot of my virtual machines headless, which is without a monitor and all that on my main server, uh, is that if you have them open in the GUI like this, you can actually see all of their screens and stats this way. If you select them all, as it were. Now let's go and ungroup that. Okay, and I guess one last trick I can show you is. Uh, saving the state of a virtual machine. Uh, basically, you can go ahead and start up a virtual machine like we have, like I've shown you the past uh, two virtual machines. There, just start it up, boot up all the way, and sometimes it can take a couple minutes uh, to do, depending on how fast your your physical machine is. Now, if you wanted to skip the boot time and kind of save your work real quick, quickly, what you can do is save the machine state and take. A you know go back to where you were just when you uh, kinda left off so in this case I got the save state of my desktop here for my Ubuntu one so as you can see here it starts up it's gonna go ahead and restore it now th doing this is going to be a lot faster than restoring it from 
you know just booting straight out and then trying to log in well um, let's say if you had some work if you're doing some programming or if you're surfing the internet and you have several programs open uh, instead of booting up and booting up your machine and waiting for all of those uh, programs to start up during that time you can wait about let's say 15 20 seconds to restore your machine state and it takes you right to that place where you left off without clo without boot rebooting everything without having to open up every single application it does everything for you now to do that you actually have to just go to the machine menu up here in the upper left click on close and then select the one that says machine state otherwise most of the time you want to click on power off the machine I just do this mostly as a convenience factor so I'm just going to go ahead and save the machine state so that way I don't have to uh, deal with booting or anything else that, that of that nature while I'm uh, with that specific virtual machine well I hopefully this uh, video has been pretty informative for you uh, hopefully I can do some more videos soon I haven't had that much time lately uh, if you have any uh, comments please leave them on my YouTube video or YouTube page I'll go ahead and respond to them as if I have time thanks for watching and have some fun